Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 12, Part 1. In the first portion of this lesson, you're going to build another format to be used in an assembly. Many of the items that we're asking you to do here are, have already been done for the detail. So we're going to show a little bit quicker method of doing something here. We're going to start off by opening up the format that we created for the detail. Oh, I want to start off by going to my working directory and then opening up my existing format that I did for the lesson 11. So it's the detail format. And we spent some time creating the title block information, some of it parametric, some of it just notes. So I'm going to window this in, and not the one and two, but just to here. And right mouse button, copy it. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to open up a system format E size and paste it. And wherever I pick, that's going to be the beginning of the vector. So if I pick here and then I pick down over here, in fact, I think I'll go right here, I get fairly close. And I can then move that. Again, that avoids having to redo everything. Again, from what we've already done yesterday. And you can adjust these accordingly. All right. So the next thing we have to do is we have to make sure we're using the right parameters and setup. So if I go in and I prepare drawing properties, and I'm going to go into my list of items here. And in the book, it tells you to create this with, uh, in other words, create it new. Uh, but instead, what we're going to do is we're simply going to open up the one we did for the detail options and apply. And you'll find that these items that are being asked for to before you're set up for your properties for the drawing for the assembly are the same as the ones before. There's no difference. So it avoids having to do a little bit of work if you want to go through this that way. And we're just going to close. So we simply set up our title block and our <clears throat> parameters for the drawing itself, the sheet, the format. Now, what I'd like to do is close this. And normally what we would do is we would file and save this under a new name and then close this out and then open up the new named A or E size format. But we're going to just stay right here at this point and continue on. And I think I'll shut off my model tree. And what I want to do now is just do a little bit of the table. So we're going to go over to the table tab in the ribbon, click on table, and we are going to oh, did it wrong. And we're going to pick and then two in the column, five in the row. No, five in the column, two in the rows. And we're going to come over here and place it someplace on the drawing. Doesn't make any difference where. Now this information area is going to be used for putting in some notes. Uh, one of the things we may want to do in the very beginning is let's click on here and height and width and we can change this. So we're saying that it's, it's a half an inch. So let's make this one uh, 0.75. I can't remember what it is in the book. And the width, let's make one inch. And we can continue on with that process until we get what we want as far as our project. And again, this one is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, let's, this one is going to be one again. And this next one is going to be the biggest one. And this is going to be four inches because it's got the largest category in it. 
and then you're supposed to change the other two also. Now, this is a, a table that we want to put some words into, and that's all it is, is words. And one of the things, maybe let's try this. Let's window in everything, right mouse button, go to text style, and let's make everything point two for now. And let's make it centered and middle. And apply. And let's see whether or not it takes, we'll go okay. So now, in this first block here, this is going to be my item, and it's just a word we're going to type in. And for some reason, it doesn't look like it took my parameter that I wanted it to. So let's go over and see what happens. Well, it took it, it took it, it took it. It says it took it. Okay. Now, that's just a word. These are just notes. In the middle here, we're going to want to put description. We're going to want our categories. This one over here is quantity. QTY. Oh, didn't get it. And I can see this one didn't go in the right spot, so my global change didn't really take. And I'm just going to do a few letters here. That's it. Okay, now I want to try and see what happens. If I go in here and check my text style, yeah, see, it for some reason it went back, and I'm not sure why. Let's go 0.25 because this is the larger of the blocks. And we'll center it, and we'll go to the middle. Apply. Okay. So now I've got it set up. Now you've got a couple other categories in here. You've got part number and something else, uh, material. Now, these are just notes. These are just headings, I should say. They don't have any parametric values. What you want to do is you want to create a table that will read in the information for the, from the uh, model's parameters. Each component should have parameters built into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select Repeat Region, and we're going to click on here, oh, Add, click on here, and then the other side. And it puts this red box in there. And under Attributes, click in there, No Duplicates, Recursive. And that means it starts from the top of the model and looks for every component. And then we'll click Done. And that should be it for setting it up. Now, the first one here is the item. It's called the index number, like one, two, three, four com of your components when it gets ballooned. So we're going to start off by double clicking in that area. And it is a repeat. And it is index. And in the one over here, this one is repeat. And it is quantity. In the middle here, it's a little bit different. This one is assembly member user defined. And if you remember, we use DSC. Now, if you type DCS, it won't read the parameter from the model. So you have to make sure you do that correctly. Like so. And you have one for a part number and you have one for material. So you've got this set up right now. That's all you re really need to do. All of these, you can just go through the steps. You can center them. You can change their size, etc. Now, the main thing to understand is that you have to have component parameters. So you're going to have to go through every single one of the components for this assembly. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly open up my clamp assembly. And that puts everything in session. And then I'm going to close it. So now, when I go to open, I can just click on in session. And I can click on the one that I want. Now, let's say it's the clamp arm and the generic. And I'm going to go and check for the parameters. So tools, parameters, and the parameters dialog appears. 
and you can make these a little bit bigger to see what they're saying. And this one's obviously been completed. The main thing here is these parameters, these names, DSC, PRTNO, PTC material name, etc. These have to be the same as what you're going to be putting in for your columns on your title block for the bill of materials. So parameters are very easy to add. So let's just say um, model version. And they won't let you put a space, so you have to put an underscore. And let's say this is uh, a string, which means you can type in something here. And let's just put it um, 101 and designate. This means it sets it up to be read and used in your product data management system, whether it's Windchill or some other ex external program that you use to manage all your data. And click OK. Now, what this does for you is it gives you all these categories that are going to be read into the model. But you have to go do this, and we're not going to do it in the lecture, to every single component. And that includes the purchased ones and the plate, which you may not have set up completely with all the elements you need, which are layers and colors and set datums. <clears throat> and then you have the three purchased items, which you also have to set up correctly. So all of that has to be done in the very beginning. And I'm going to click OK, even though I'm, I'm not going to save it because I don't want this in here, but it'll be in there for while it's in session. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close this also. I'll use the completed one later. And what I want to do is I want to open up my assembly and show you that a lot of this work could have been done in the assembly itself. So in tree filters here, I'm going to make sure I turn everything on so I can see it all. And under columns, I'm going to add information. And so under model parameters, we could we could apply these two. We might as well. Those two. Now we have to build our own parameters here. DSC. I want that one over there. I want PRTNO. These are ones we used in each component. And PTC underscore M-A-T-E-R-I-A-L underscore name. Now, I have no idea why we have to do this, but we have to bring that over there. And we're going to apply and OK. Now, that gives us a set of columns that we can work quickly with to see what is available, what is missing. And if there is something missing, we can add it at this point. And you can see all the information has been put into the models. But if there was something missing, you can always click on it. For instance, let's say you wanted to have uh, modeled by. Let's say this uh, uh, swivel was modeled by somebody else. And uh, let's use Bob, whoever Bob is. And if we try to do this by with the, uh, the stud, though, it won't let us because we said that was purchased. So let's do another one. How about Tui? That's my wife's name. I got a lot of Vietnamese students, and my wife is Vietnamese, so I'll use one of their names. All right, so these people modeled this, and so you can add them right here in the columns, anything. If you want to make a change, you can even make a change with the material. And so if you don't get something done on the component itself, you can always go to the model tree and input the information all at the same time. And we're going to come out of there. And I'll go back down. And so basically, you're setting up your, your, your folders, your, um, your component parameters. You're setting up all your, uh, your format. So we'll go back over to our format. And this is the one like you will create eventually. And let's hit F11. So you'll see you have your format. You got all your information in. 
it's all ready to go for your drawing. And we're going to stop right there because the next part is going to be to create the drawing itself.